It's the dictionary. 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 Hey, word nerds, how you doing today? What's up, everybody? I am recording this on August. No. <laughs> August. September 21st, 7.42 a.m. I'm getting a bit of a late start today because I've been working a lot of hours the last few days and, uh, you know, just need to get a little extra sleep. Um, okay, please rate and review this show. I would really just, oh, just make me happy, re appreciate it so much. Please and thank you. Uh, go ahead and email me if you want to comment uh, anything you want to say. Did I say something wrong? Probably. Go ahead and email me about it, dictionarypod at gmail.com. You can also find me on social media at dictionarypod. For some reason, I'm still doing the Twitter X thing, but I'm not really on it all that much. Uh, what do we, we got threads and we got Instagram and I have not joined the other ones because it's just too much and I can't, I don't have the brain power for all those things. But you can uh, comment on my post and you can DM me and um, you can also get a hold of me by the Google Voice number 917-727-5757. Call it, leave a message. I would like to put it in an episode if you're okay with that. If you have a joke for any word in the future of the alphabet, send it to me via email, only email, and I will mention your joke and credit you when I get there. You can buy merchandise at the T public link in the show notes. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1 a month. But if you want to see my face and the shirt that I am wearing, I have to stand up to, for you to see it. Uh, you got to be at the $5 a level uh, to, to see that stuff. Get exclusives, get video when I have a guest on, all those sort of sorts of things. You can listen to this show on YouTube. My channel is, I think, Spejampar, S-P-E-J-A-M-P-A-R. That's also my personal uh, social media if you want to go do that. If I've, have I forgotten anything? Uh, Jonah and Tom have made the two theme songs. For some reason, I have two. Deal with it. If you want to make your own theme song, uh, if, it's a, if it meets my standards, which are quite low, uh, send it to me via email. Send me an audio file. Please keep it short. Shorty, short, short. Uh, if you want to make your own sound effect, send it, and I guess I'll put that in an episode too. Okay, let's get to the words. We have, we are starting with the second form of emboss, E-M-B-O-S-S. -S. This one is a transitive verb from the 15th century, number one, to raise the surface of into bosses. Hmm. Okay, well, I, I was aware that when you emboss a thing, you either raise the level of a thing or you lower it. Like, I remember in Photoshop, it had the emboss effect, which I always thought was pretty cool. Um, but I did not know that you were raising the surface of into bosses. What are bosses? But especially to ornament with raised work. Do we need to go back to the word boss? What is a boss? I don't remember this at all. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, this is going to be way too hard. Way too hard to do. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, I'm at box, board, board, boss, boo. Oh, we were close. Here we go. Boss, boss, boss. Let's see. We got an ornamental projecting block used in architecture. That's probably it. Uh, so if you're raising a thing to be this ornamental structure or something like that, you're embossing. Two, to raise in relief from a surface. Relief is like a... Yeah, it's in relief. It's uh, it's the things that there's like different levels, different. It's in three dimensions. Uh, number three, the synonyms are adorn and embellish. Embellish. Yeah, we just had that one. So yeah, it's all about ornaments and things like that, making it fancy. I'm so fancy. Embossable is an adjective. Embosser is a noun. Embossment is a noun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the etymology is pretty clear because we got this whole boss thing, uh, but it is from the Middle French, embosser, which is from N, plus bus, B-O-C-E, which means boss. So it's creating a boss, uh, raising to a boss, all that stuff. Oh, my sound effect is going to be um, 
let's see. I had it in my head, and now I have forgotten it. it it's, it's like a flip, 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 flip. Sure. Next word is embouchure. Or, let's see, embouchure. I guess you can emphasize the last syllable. Embouchure or embouchure. It is spelled E-M-B-O-U-C-H-U-R-E. Noun from 1760. One. The position and use of the lips, tongue, and teeth in playing a wind instrument. You are using the wind from your lungs through your throat through your mouth to create the sound, to create the vibration, which will create the sound through the instrument. Uh, I played uh, clarinet for one year in uh, fourth grade, and then I played the saxophone for about a decade. Uh, what else we got? What other instruments do you need embouchure for? Trumpet, trombone, tuba, French horn, flute. Uh, what am I forgetting? S not a piano, not a drum. Um, what I know I'm forgetting something real obvious, probably. I'm, I'm like going through the orchestra, the band that I was in, other things near me, uh, the, the baritone, all the brass instruments, the woodwinds, oboe, bassoon, contrabassoon. Yep. You need to move, p p put your lips, put your lips and your teeth and your tongue in various positions specific to that instrument. And that is the embouchure, your mouth into an embouchure. Number two, the mouthpiece of a musical instrument. Mm, the piece that you put on, that you put your mouth on, put your mouth on the piece that goes on to the instrument, that is also the embouchure. Um, the, and they're all different. You know, even from the clarinet to the saxophone, you need a different embouchure. And once I had played the saxophone for years, I think I went back to try to play a clarinet and I just couldn't because I didn't know how to position my face. This word is a French word, clearly, which uh, it shows that there's an S at the beginning in parentheses, sambusher, and it means to flow into because this is from the N prefix plus bouche, which means mouth, and there's more at the word debouche. I don't remember. That's probably cleaning the mouth out, probably. Um, so yes, it's uh, to flow into to flow into, but you're going out of the mouth, but it says in, I don't know, it's going into the instrument, but it's out of the mouth. That's very interesting. It's a fun word, embouchure. The next word is embourgeoisement. Embourgeoisement. Uh, you can also pronounce it embourgeoisement. Oh, and then, of course, this very Frenchy, uh, probably most accurate way is, I'm not going to say it correctly, it's embourgeoisement. Embourgeoisement. That's close enough. It is spelled, because, I mean, it's, to my English eyes and brain, it's not spelled great, but it's spelled French. E-M-B-O-U-R-G-E-O-I-S-E-M-E-N-T. Embourgeoisement, noun from 1937. This is a shift to bourgeois, bu I don't even know how to say that word anymore, a shift to bourgeois values and practices. Bourgeois, I feel like, has different connotations depending on who you're talking to. Uh, so a sh you're going towards the bourgeois. I think some people like to say bourgeois is like, ooh, fancy, I'm so fancy again. Um, high level bourgeois fancy. Uh, but I don't know, does everybody feel that way? I'm not sure. Uh, this is from French, uh, bourgeoisère, which means to make bourgeois. I'm gonna make you bourgeois today. We're so bougie, I'm gonna bougie you up. But we should bring this one back into our language. Flip, 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 flip. The next word is embowed. E-M-B-O-W-E-D. It's like a bow and arrow. This is an adjective from the 15th century, and it is bent like a bow. And the synonym is arched. Anything that's arched, bent like a bow, just a curve, an arc, whoop, whoop, like the thing on my shirt. 
Well, no. <laughs> I thought it was just a half. It's a whole circle. It's a circle rainbow. It's not arced like a bow. But it is curved. Uh, it's not embowed. It's double embowed. Put two of them together. Flip, 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 flip. Embowel is next. Yes, it's the word bowel with E-M at the start. This is a transitive verb from 1521. Number one, the synonym. Why is English like this? The synonym is disembowel. Um, let's see. I have been I've been mentioning the podcast The Allusionist recently because I've been binging it. I think I'm almost at episode 60. And let's see. There was an episode recently called The Authority, and it was all about well, dictionaries and what goes into creating them. And uh, the guest on that episode was was one of these, I think they're called lexicog no, lexographers. They're the ones who write all these definitions. And, uh, you know, so like the word irregardless came up, even though it doesn't, it's not technically a word, it is a word because people have used it. And so it needs to be put in the dictionary. Um, but, you know, we see this all the time of, you can change the prefix or add a prefix and it still somehow is the same thing. So they're not technically right, but because that they've been used in context and writing specifically, they got to put them in here. Embowel, disembowel. So what is that? Is that getting rid of your bowels? The stuff in your bowels getting rid of it? It's something. Uh, number two for disembowel. No, sorry. Embowel. We're in the E section. Number two is obsolete. And the synonym is enclose. So you're putting a thing into a little box. Maybe you're emboweling it. Flip, 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 flip. Embower is next. Yes, embower. We had embowed, embowel, embower. Transitive verb from 1580. And this is to shelter or enclose in or as if in a bower. As in the quote, like a rose embowered in its own green leaves. And that is from P.B. Shelley. We may have seen P.B. Shelley before because I want their name to be Peanut Butter Shelley. Mr. Peanut Butter. Uh, so, yeah, it's just being closed. But it, as if in a bower. What's a bower? Hey, instead of going back through the pages of this book with one hand uh, let's just type it with one hand a pleasant shady place under trees or climbing plants in a garden or wood that is a bower oh i want to curl up in a little bower i want to be embowered uh let's see there is no etymology because it's just from the word uh bower flip, 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 flip. next is embrace first form Verb from the 14th century, 1A, to clasp in the arms, and the synonym is hug. Hugging, it's so special. It's, you're, it's like you're embowering somebody. You're being embowered by their arms. 1B, the synonyms are cherish and love, embrace. If you are embracing somebody, you probably cherish and love them. Embrace. Number two, the synonyms are encircle and enclose. Encircle, enclose, embrace. 3A. To take up, especially readily or gladly, as in embrace a claw. A cl I can't say it. <laughs> embrace a cause, not a Santa Claus. A cause. I feel very strongly about this cause, and so I will gladly bring it into my life and fight for the rights to party. Uh, let's see. 3B, to avail oneself of. The synonym is welcome, as in, embraced the opportunity to study further. You are, you are providing me the opportunity to do more studying, to do more reading, to do more learning. Yes, please. I will embrace that. I will take you up on your offer. 4A. To take in or include as a part, item, or element of a more inclusive whole. As in, charity embraces all acts that contribute to human welfare. 
Uh, charity embraces all acts, so any acts that are going to help human welfare, uh, I guess that's that's charity. Charity embraces all those things. Do those things, please and thank you. Help your fellow people in any way you can. We're trying to bring people together, not separate them. Separating in general, I, I think, is not, uh, not, it's not helping. It's not helping. 4B, to be equal or equivalent to, as in his assets, embraced $10. His assets were equal to $10? He only had $10 worth in assets? Well, I think we need to bring some charity to this person. I think they could use a little bit of help. Hmm. To be equal or equivalent to. I have not heard it used in that way. Those were transitive, if I didn't say. Now we have intransitive, which is just one. To participate in an embrace. I'm going to participate. Can we participate in an embrace, please? Come here. Get over here. We're going to participate in an embrace, whether you like it or not. Come here. Let's embrace. How long are you supposed to embrace for? A synonym, a couple for the whole thing are adopt and include. Embraceable is an adjective. Embracement is a noun. Embracer is a noun. And embracingly is an adverb. Mm -hmm. Let's do that embracingly. This is from the Anglo-French embrasser, embrasser, which is from N plus br bras. I think that's how they would maybe say that. A bras is a pair of arms. And then I guess when you put the E-N before it, it becomes what? It becomes uh, bringing those arms around something else, using them to hold. There's more at the word brace. It's when you when we hug. We're bracing up against each other. Flip, 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 flip. The next word is the second form of embrace. Noun from 1592. One. A close encircling with the arms and pressure to the chest. Especially as a sign of affection. The synonym is hug. Oh, that was a good definition. You lexicographers. Lexographers. Lexic. Lexic. Whatever the word is, you you came up with a good one here. I love the because this is what they were talking about in that episode. They were saying how the definitions have to be very scientific and bland and boring and accurate. You can't make it fun because they said that people don't um, they they don't believe them as much when they're sort of fun and interesting. So you have to make it very bland and accurate. Because it's more believable, because it's the it's the truth. You're being very factual. And so, what is an embrace? Well, it is. It's it's a close encircling with the arms and pressure to the chest, especially as a sign of affection. It's all it's all in there. I don't think they missed a thing. You gotta I guess you have to press press your chests against each other to make it a full embrace, possibly. Number two. The synonyms are grip and encirclement, as in, in the embrace of terror, uh, in the grip of terror. I am being encircled by terror. Terror has embraced me. It's like a warm, affectionate hug by terror. Terror has encircled its arms and put pressure on my chest. Number three, the synonym is acceptance, as in, her embrace of new ideas. She is embracing the new ideas. I think that's very good. You want to change with life, g g grow, seed, and learn new things. Um, and so her, her embracing of the new ideas is an embrace. Acceptance. Next is embracer. But it has an extra letter that you might not think of because, again, I think this is French. E-M-B-R-A-C-E-O-R. -E so we didn't just add an R to embrace. We added an O-R, but still pronounced embracer, at least here in America. Noun from the 15th century, 
It is one guilty of embracery, which is coming up. It's coming up. Don't worry. But first, we have to look at the etymology because uh, it is from the Anglo-French embrasser, which means to set on fire. To set on fire. It is from N plus, but I don't know. It's So it's, it's B-R-A-S-E or B-R-E-S-E, bres, brez. And that means live coals. So when you're using live coals, uh, you could be setting something on fire. Hmm. There's more at the word braise. Ah, yes. When you cook meat, you are, might be braising it. Or maybe other things. Can you braise non-meats? So, flip, 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 flip. The next word is embracery. Noun from the 15th century. An attempt to influence a jury corruptly. Okay, well, I thought this was going to have to do with fire, and I'm very disappointed. But it's still in the legal world. So, okay, so an embracer is somebody who is attempting to influence a jury corruptly. Corruptly. They're, they're very corrupt. Uh, but maybe bribes or something like that. Um, and I guess maybe, huh, now, is this metaphorically setting the jury on fire, or does it come from arsonists who would set things on fire, and then they would try and get out of the trial by bribing the jury, possibly? Hmm, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, that's embracery and embracer. Didn't know any of that. Next is embraceive. Now, this one, yes, embraceive. Adjective from 1855. One, disposed to embrace. Disposed to embrace, like, disposed to embrace. Am, am I going to embrace? Am I? Do I like to embrace? Are we talking about the hugs, probably? Number two, the synonyms are inclusive and comprehensive. Um, so, yeah, it's anything that's just related to just, like, Taking a thing, taking an idea, literally embracing possibly, uh, thats it's embraceive. Hmm. Not sure how that gets used in context. Next is embrangle. Yeah, I think it's embrangle. B-R-A-N-G-L-E. Transitive verb from 1664. The synonym is embroil, which is going to be in the next episode. Embroil. Um, and embranglement is a noun. So, uh, oh, well, we do have etymology. It is from N plus brangle, which is squabble. So it's something about maybe squabbling, which is a fun word. Flip, 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 flip. The next word is embrasure. E-M-B-R-A-S-U-R-E. -E. Noun from 1702. One. An opening with sides flaring outward in a wall or parapet on a of a fortification, usually for allowing the firing of cannon. Uh, embrasure. Okay, so yeah, an opening with sides flaring outward... Okay, well, I've, I've been in a couple of old buildings or castles in my day. Uh, specifically, I think, in we were in, where were we? In Ireland, I think. Yeah, we found this old little castle. And when you're walking up the stairs or maybe on certain levels, they have these little windows. Maybe it's a square. Maybe it's like a skinny rectangle. And it's maybe skinnier on the inside, but then on the outside, it flares out. And so when you're shooting the cannon or possibly bow and arrow, um, you, you want it to flare out so you've got some space maybe to aim or something like that. So that window basically is called an embrasure. It's an opening. Number two, a recess of a door or window. So I guess if the door or window is recessed in, it probably still has the flaring sides, top, bottom, left, right. And so that would also be an embrasure. This is uh, French from the obsolete embrasure, which means to widen an opening. That's all it is. An opening that widens out, it flares out, 
is uh, embrasser, embrasure. The next word is embrittle. Yeah, like peanut brittle. Peanut embrittle. Verb from 1902. This is transitive. To make brittle. If you are making, how do you make something brittle? Um, well, if you don't take care of your body, you you might be embrittling your bones. Or maybe if you have a medical condition, that might be embrittling your bones. Intransitive is to become brittle. So again, with the bones, your bones might be embrittling as you get older and possibly have a medical condition of some kind. Uh, other things that can become brittle, I don't know, glass, uh, paper, paper, I guess if paper dries up. It could be embrittled. Embrittlement is a noun. There's no etymology because it's all about brittleness. Embrication is next. Noun from the 15th century. The synonym is liniment. L-I-N-I-M-E-N-T. Liniment. I don't know what that is. Uh, but we do have some etymology. This is from, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping some of this because it's, let's see, Latin verb embrocare, which means to rub with lotion. Rubbing with lotion from the Greek embrosh, which means lotion, from N plus brekin, which means to wet. So making something wet, probably, probably with lotion, uh, Rub with lotion, it's embrocation. I have some lotion over there because when I wash my hands, they get real dry, so I need to put on some lotion. In fact, they are, they're kind of dry right now. In between the knuckles, it gets real dry. Yeah, oh boy, I need to cut my nails. Woo! Um, so liniment, something about lotion and mm, rubbing the lotion. Oh, what's that? What's that line? If you don't do the thing, you got to rub the lotion on the body. Yeah, I, I screw that one up. Flip, 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 flip. The last word is embroider. E-M-B-R-O-I-D-E-R. -E and I'm sure that some people are like, ooh, the American way to say that word is terrible. Embroider. This is a verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive. 1A, to ornament with needlework. You're putting yarn, different colored yarn through needles, and then you're sticking the needles in a uh, fabric or something, making fancy patterns and, and pictures, and you're ornamenting with needlework. You're embellishing with needlework. You're embroidering. 1B, to form with needlework. To form with needlework? I don't understand that. Number two, to elaborate on. And the synonym is embellish, as in embroider a story i had no idea you could embroider a story not literally but maybe verbally or in writing you're just embellishing you're elaborating you're putting on ornaments you're ornamenting it hmm that i didn't know i didn't know it could be used this way intransitive number one to make embroidery and that word will be in the next episode no embroidery Number two, to provide embellishments. The synonym is elaborate. Uh, yeah, so it's just uh, giving additional information. It's, uh, it's interesting that we have this physical embroidery thing with needles, needle and yarn, but then we have this embellish ornament thing. Um, you know, clearly it seems to be like the idea of when you're doing embroidery, you're, you're adding ornaments, you're embellishing it, you're making it nicer and fancier with this needlework. And so they just took that same idea into stories or additional information. But it's just, it's, it's, they don't, other than that, they don't really make sense. They don't, they don't, yeah. I, I, do you understand? Do you feel the same way as I do? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Embroiderer is a noun. And the etymology says this is from, let's see, Anglo-French, embrouder, which is from N plus brosder, broder, bruder, which means to embroider. 
It is of Germanic origin, akin to the Old English broad. Is that an, yeah, broad, which means point, which makes sense because the needles have a point. Is there any point to this podcast? Um, also from the Old English birst, birst, which means bristle. Interesting. Maybe the yarn was bristly. I don't know. Um, but, 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 but. Uh, it is time now, because I finished all the words, that I will quickly say them again, and we will pick a word of the episode. We had emboss, embouchure, embourgeoisement, embourgeoisement, embowed, embowel, embower, embrace, embrace, embracer, embracery, embraceive, embrangle, embrasure, embrittle, embrocation and embroider hmm well i like embouchure i like embrace uh i have never done embroidery but we haven't talked about embroidery yet um hmm let's see i'm leaning towards you know what yeah let's just pick embrace 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 we're gonna hug. It's called an embrace. Embrace, embrace. Embrace, embrace. I don't know. Wasn't totally inspired by that, but it's fine. It was a bit of a song. Um, I will quickly say another movie that I watched, which is Relic from 2020. I'm trying to remember this movie. You know what? Let's go to IMDb and look up pictures because that is what my brain needs i want to say it's a horror movie uh let's see okay okay i'm starting to it's starting to come back yeah drama horror mystery um wow i am having a hard time remembering a lot of this <laughs> i'm looking at the pictures hmm yeah it's oh okay I remember that part yes I do um, yeah it's a uh, yeah drama horror mystery that's I think a good way to describe it it's a uh, it's creepy creepy and uh, interesting and yeah it's a uh, very metaphorical as well which is uh, I think a good movie can be very metaphorical even though I'm a very literal person I appreciate the metaphors this has been Spencer dispensing information to you. Thank you. Let's embrace. Goodbye.